So uh, this week, part three of uh, yeah, it's exchange. Part three, isn't it? Yeah, more exchange, exchange stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, apologies for those that don't want it, but the feedback has been so. Exchange seems to be the hot topic. Well, we're getting yeah a bit of feedback on exchange, so I thought we'd carry on a little bit. But uh, I think this is probably going to be the last one for a little while, unless again we get good feed we get feedback that suggests that you, you want, want more. To see more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I noticed somebody uh, see the comment last week or the last time we did exchange. Somebody saying that uh, exchange as a home paid product would be great. Yes, <laughs> so that was our episode one was simply installing it, wasn't it? So it we was. installed it, and um, I think we sent some email to local recipients. Uh, the next step was uh, getting an internet email. So last exchange episode, we set up dynamic DNS services, and we got our exchange server to be able to send out internet email and also receive internet email, which, okay, not very useful unless you want a horrible internet email <laughs> address. But you know you can hide that. You you can see name record that to a name you you bought, and I'm sure you guys can work out how to do that. But the whole purpose of that really is so you can build a test lab and you can play around in your test lab. And if you break it, it doesn't matter. No. Okay, that's the idea. So what we're going to have a look at. Um, and it worked all so, it all worked so seamlessly. It all worked so yeah amazingly well. But one thing we did do is we only had the one exchange server and that was sending and receiving internet email, mm. which is, is sort of against. Well, against Microsoft recommendations, we made a few jokes on that one, and we said, "Oh, yeah, so we want to buy some of their products." But you know, there is a reason, and the reason is, I don't want people from the internet accessing the same machine that hosts all these important emails on. It's mm. as simple as that. I don't really want that. I don't like that happening. Now, there are different roles, but in theory, what you could do is, you know, if there's some kind of issue with SMTP, well, someone could just flood your SMTP server, fill up the disk space, you'd lose your mailboxes, you lost everything. Yeah. So what we're going to have a look at in, in this episode is implementing uh, the edge transport role. I'm not going to make the joke. No, I'm not making any jokes about that. So um, I'm sure that will come later. You, uh, um, so <laughs> <laughs> with Exchange Server, we've got a single Exchange Server, and uh, we haven't made any diff changes to it. This is exactly what you saw in the last episode. So I just want to um, click on Send Connectors, and that was a Send Connector that we created last time, so I'm going to actually remove that. It's a beautiful resolution. It is a nice res, isn't it? Almost high def light. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I did, I think, oh, um, no, I can't remember now. <laughs> <laughs> but Hub Transport, the other thing I did do underneath um, default, we went into authentication and we said, sort of permission screen and we said it. anonymous users can send email. That allowed us to actually be able to send, it was a bit of a cheat wasn't it? Well yeah, it's so that people from the internet can access this exchange server directly, so I'm just going to undo that Yeah. and we're going to start off with the edge transport role. So the first thing is well, what's so special about the edge transport role? Well it's a, it's a server which sits in your DMZ or your screen subnet and the idea of it is um, it, it's sitting out there and it's sending internet email out and it's receiving uh, mail coming back in. Mm -hmm. And the key point to that edge transport server is it's, it hasn't got any mailboxes on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if that edge transport server gets compromised, compromised in any way, shape, or, I always just say violated, but also <laughs> gets compromised in any way, shape, or form, then um, in theory, well, no, if that edge transport server gets compromised, it's not going to bring down my mailbox servers inside. Okay. And it's not causing any damage there. So the first thing we need to do is actually install the edge transport role, which I'm, I'm going to take you through. But there's a few prerequisites to that. Okay. Because what they've done now is the edge transport role, it doesn't even need to be on an active directory machine. It can be on a work group server. Right. And when I say it can be, it's actually meant to be. Okay. <laughs> it so should be. It should be. It should be on a standalone machine or not a member of your production domain. You might have a little domain running in your DMZ. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is, again, if that becomes compromised, people haven't got access to Active Directory. Oh, of course, because they could learn an awful lot from that. Exactly, yeah. So we've got our ex internal exchange server, and that's going to send or um, send messages to the edge transport. That's the one that's exposed, and the edge transport sends the internet mail out and receives it coming back in. Okay. But it's not going to receive any information. It's not going to be part of Active Directory. And this should start you thinking, and think, well, hang on a second. It's not part of Active Directory. It's not going to have access to any of this communicate any of this configuration. But does it, it must just store a copy of what's pertinent? Exactly, and that's exactly what it does do. So let's follow along that line for a little bit. So um, all, all this configuration, like the edge transport uh, accepted domains, if you think about it, that's all the things that the edge transport needs to know about. Hmm. We've configured it inside the Exchange organisation, so that's in Active Directory. Yeah. That edge server isn't part of Active Directory, so how's it going to know about this useful information? And the answer is that pretty much what you said, Nick. It does maintain a copy, and it does that through something called Adam. 
Okay, what's that mean? Adam is Active Directory Application Mode. 